Hey, this is Doug with Design 8 Studio, and I have wondrously combined two videos into only one. Here in just a moment, there'll be a stopping off point for anyone who's not interested in learning the right way versus the wrong way to cut plexiglass and v-carve plexiglass with your CNC. But for those who are interested in that, you can keep watching. In my last video, there's a moment where if you freeze the frame, you can see both of my logo signs that are in my workshop in the same frame. The one on the right was done last, most recent, and it has light diffuser plexiglass on both the front and reverse logos. But the one on the left was the very first bit of signage that I made once I made my second Lowrider version 3, which carries a plasma torch, the very first bit of metal cutting that I did with my new plasma rig was to make this Design 8 Studio wall art, which involves a combination of both 3D printing, woodworking, and metalworking, as well as electronics to do the wiring and mounting of the LEDs. And when I first made it, my initial thought was that the light glowing from the back side of it onto the wood and onto the wall would provide enough contrast for the letters to be visible. But as you can see in this photo, uh, this screenshot, a snapshot from my recent video, there are angles at which you can see the black 3D printed standoffs and there are angles at which the wood is darker than the wall, and there are angles in which shadows cast make uh, the background not bright enough, and sometimes the gray of the background is the same shade as the gray of the metal, and you can't always read the wording of my studio name. So for the longest time now, I've been meaning to put some white plexiglass light diffuser into it like I did on the other one. Now, because of my sign making experience and jobs that I've done, I was in possession of a roll of white semi-transparent film that when applied to clear plexiglass will turn that clear plexiglass into semi-translucent white light diffuser plexiglass. But it's a little frustrating to work with. You can get wrinkles when you're applying it. You can get bubbles in it. And it can get scratched. And when it gets scratched, it's not semi-transparent anymore. The scratch can be a transparent area. So it's kind of a bit of a pain. So I'll leave a link in the description to a 2 foot by 4 foot sheet of 1 8 inch thick white plexiglass semi-translucent uh, light diffuser that I purchased so that I wouldn't have to bother with peeling off that film and applying it. And I wanted to, I wanted to create a clear plexiglass light diffusing panel out of quarter inch thick plexiglass that would be positioned right over the LEDs and would have, with V-carving um, channels in it, would be able to have angles that would catch the light that was passing through that clear plexiglass and diffuse it onto another layer, a semi-transparent white layer of plexiglass. And thus, I would be able to have the light still communicated effectively, even though I basically had to make the, the light do a 90-degree turn, or do a right-angle turn to go from the top out the front or from the sides or the bottom out the front. And so that led to my need to do some V-carving into quarter inch thick plexiglass. And I previously had done some research and figured out the right speeds and feeds needed for cutting plexiglass. But wouldn't you know it, when I set up to do the job, I picked the wrong tool profile and didn't get the speeds and feeds right. And I must have been drowsy or 
not alert enough. And so I tried to counteract it by simply slowing down the speed of the router. But here is the takeaway. When you're cutting plexiglass, you need to keep the tip, your router bit, cool, uh, relatively cool, and you need to keep the plexiglass cool. And the rule of thumb is this. When you're cutting it, you need to see chips, small chips or medium-sized chips flying off of that plexiglass. When you don't see chips flying, then the, the plexiglass that is being cut is not being excavated from the job. It is turning into a molten semi-liquid state, and it is gumming up around your bit. Ask me how I know. And so for this first cut, I actually had uh, these molten bits of plexiglass uh, getting flung off of the bit. Uh, it would build up like a donut around the bit, and then the centripetal force, is it centripetal or centrifugal? I never can remember. Anyway, the, the, the angular momentum force uh, was flinging these molten bits of plexiglass off of the bit. And in one case, I found a huge coronal mass ejection chunk of plexiglass uh, about 16 feet away from where the cutting was taking place, just had been flown through the room over furniture and was laying on the floor quite a distance away from the CNC machine. And so I was able to eventually, uh, with misting with alcohol, I was able to keep the plexiglass cool enough and keep the bit cool enough to finally get the V-carving uh, done on the clear plexiglass. But thankfully, when I went to cut out the profile, I realized that I was using uh, the wrong feeds and speeds, went back to Esselcam. I'll put a screenshot here and take a moment to pause and show you the correct feeds and speeds uh, for use of a 1 8 inch bit. This is a single flute, or what's commonly called an O flute bit, uh, 1 8 inch. And these speeds and feeds uh, do work well, and they produce uh, small chips that are being evacuated quickly and are not, uh, have not been heated up to a molten state. <laughs> And so once I finally got uh, everything cut out, then I was able to uh, position it so that first goes in the white semi-translucent light diffusing layer, 
and then goes in the quarter inch thick uh, clear plexiglass with the angle cut um, light bouncing angles in it, light channels in it, and then get my uh, logo wall art put back together. And I'll show you here what it looks like if you squeeze a camera in behind it, you can see the light being bounced by those 45 degree uh, bevel cuts that were V-carved into that back piece of quarter inch thick plexiglass. And then you can see here what it looks like from the front. And so this was just one of those things, every video I made, this logo was sh showing up and was not particularly readable. And so this was one of those things that's just kind of been nagging at me. And so I finally got it fixed. Oh, hey, and while I've still got you here, check out my Etsy store for, among other things, one of the most amazing Settlers of Catan game board upgrades you've ever seen anywhere. Again, this is Doug with Design 8 Studio. And until the next video, I wish you happy making.